the ball. Linda and Tommy were getting worried about Dan. Dan, what is wrong? What's wrong, Dan? Assembly time for three hours. Oh, Dan, you're gonna build the car with your son. It's been a while since I played this game, and I don't know who I made. Whoa, loud refrigerator is loud. I don't know uh, who I made the last compromise with, so I'm just gonna go with my feeling this time. Trash bags, aspirin, salad dressing, beer, case, popcorn, oakburn, bread. We have so much soup, boy. Uh oh. Daddy is drinking. Making this dress worth not better. That's a nice picture. That's a nice drawing, I mean. What's Barb, that? I know I wrote yesterday, but I just. I need your advice. Yeah. I think Dan's drinking too much. And oh. before you start to worry, let me say he's not an alcoholic. It's just because of the pressure he's under trying to finish the book. But you know Dan's never exactly been a health nut. He isn't gaining weight yet, though even that's just because alcohol kills his appetite. So he's hardly eating at night, which is another problem altogether. I don't think he sees what he's doing to himself, and I don't know how to break through to him about this. Sometimes I just want to say it's not like I have to get drunk to paint, but I know that's not the most mature way to handle it. Sorry for dumping all this on you, I just wanted to get it off my chest. Do you have any advice about how to talk to him? Yours, Linda. Uh oh. <clears throat> That's what I get for eating while recording. Then, then what's wrong? Dan, talk to me. Alan, hey man, <laughs> this is gonna sound odd, but I could use some advice. I'm in hot water here because, well, I've been drinking more lately. Man, there's just no good way to write that. I mean, I used to drink and write all the time in school. You remember that, right? I guess I got away from it when we got married and definitely after Tommy came along. He's in bed by 8.30 every night now. And let me be clear. I'm not blacking out or driving drunk. You know I'd never do something like that. I just have a few drinks while I'm working, safe and sound in the house. A writer who drinks isn't exactly unheard of. Well, could I sound more defensive? Yeah. But here's the hell of it. It's working. No. It's brought back that college hunger, that energy. And in the last week or two, the book's just singing. I don't even know what I'm asking here. Maybe I just wanted to start the conversation. If you get a chance, give me a call. Dan. Always when I hear that name, Alan, I have to think about that rapture in Jurassic Park. <laughs> that's why I'm all laughing every time. So, th and that's not good. Even though it's working, that's not good. I'm not going to allow that. No. Right drunk, edit sober. No. Apparently Hemingway said that. So what? Or maybe someone else did. It doesn't matter, because it's true. To write, you have to be fearless. You have to make choices and plow forward. Surprise the reader. Surprise yourself. Make something that matters, not something safe. What does drinking do? It suppresses inhibitions. Yeah, there are typos, but that's what copy editors are for. And it, It's not like I'm drinking all day. I'm fixing most of this stuff myself each morning. Or early afternoon, I guess. That, well, I'm not stumbling around drunk all day and pissing myself. I'm trying to create something they'll remember me by. No one can imagine how stressful it is unless they've tried it. The pressure's so bad I just want to give up sometimes. On those nights a drink is the only way to turn my mind off and get some sleep. And when the book is done, I'll dial it back. What when you can't dial it back anymore, Dan? Dan. The thing is, I've... I've said it myself. I write myself. Hey. 
and I did not publish something yet, so I can't really say it's so easy. But you just don't drink and work, you don't do that. Whatever you're working at, even when you're drawing, even when you're painting, doesn't matter, I'm floating. You do not drink yourself to your ideas. If he uses that Hemingway quote one more time, see, pretty much every night he's either super focused on his novel or too drunk for us to spend a regular night together. That used to be our time. We would put Tommy down for the night, have a glass of wine, two at the most, and talk about our days or maybe listen to a record. Now I'm lucky to get one night a week where he's sober and not writing. Most nights he has a bourbon, no wait, make that four, and I read in bed until I fall asleep. He tries not to wake me up when he comes in, but you're never as quiet and graceful as you think you are when you're drunk and in a dark room, no less. Of course I want his book to be great, but I also want my husband back. You also can write when you're not drunk. So lucky to have some life like yes, but why are you why are you then expel memories? When you know you're lucky to have her, why then put it on a risky card and be such a bamper you are now? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's what they're from. He sounded like, oh my god, what was that, that that one game again? Castlevania or something like that? Explore his memories. Oh, oh. He sounds like that one character in Castlevania. Or some, some game for the Super Nintendo it was and he sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> so this just got me laughing. I'm sorry. Just got back from town with the latest issue. Flipped to the back and there it was. My book in the up next column. Stared at it for five minutes. Feeling in my stomach was not pleasant. Mm -hmm. But now it's out there. It's terrifying and irreversible. Maybe I should have placed a full ad. But even like this, the book is out there. Thousands of people are going to read that list. To them, the book is exactly what they want it to be. Some finished, beautiful thing. If only they could see it right now. A bunch of jigsaw pieces on the floor. And I've got to put them all together. Fast. Not every book is something beautiful. Are we done? Alright. Pour bourbon and work on the apartment scene. No, Dan. I already decided I'm not going to make a compromise with you this time. Because that's where I'll draw the line. You can't work like that. That's not how it works. Maybe I'm just too sensitive for that, but I don't care. I'm not gonna allow that. No. Linda. Linda. Why don't you stop at two? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, you think you are fine. Just you are fine, huh? I'm not asking about your uh, family if they are fine. Hello? Can I please? Thank you. Not going to the co-op is a bummer, but Tommy is night and day better now that he's going to camp. See? They did swim tests today, and he came back with the black necklace. That's the one for the strongest swimmers, so he doesn't have to be with a counselor when he swims in the lake. There are lifeguards, of course. The real benefit is that having the black necklace makes him cool because he can play Marco Polo with all the big kids. There's no way I could be sad about makeshift after seeing him smile like that. So the last compromise was that Linda had to pull away, but she's good now. Those giant shoes are right there. You just have to make the effort. Yes, but the effort to go jogging is sometimes so <laughs> big. Um. Ah. Hello? Sad, sad in the morning. <sighs> oh boy, you don't understand how alcohol works yet. Why are you in the corner? Stop it. Yes, always with your dad. I know. Always with your dad. But he promised. 
I know he promised. If he doesn't do it, I'll help you, honey. Well. Are we done? Oh, we're done. Is Daddy too sad to put together my car? No, he's not. We're gonna put together your car and your jogging shoes. Where are the jogging shoes? They were... Hey, Mommy. Hey, honey. Yes, grown-up problems. Where are the jogging shoes? Where are the jogging shoes? There they are. Alright. So this time there's no compromise. Where did he start in bed? There's no, no, like thinking about the compromise there's just the car and the jogging shoes if you want it or not then I don't care yes I'm going to pull a stop on this oh look at that a glowing thing a glowing thing give me the glowing thing the glowing thing Diary of Kay Williams, May 19, 1952. I've decided that I am sure of my decision. I do not know which is the right or wrong, only that my choice is my own. I took three days, three days alone, letting whatever calming influence is here, for I'm sure there's something to guide my thoughts. I thought about Jay and talked with Jay in my mind, and now, and I know that this is right. I cannot think about the path not taken, only the one ahead. Hmm. Aha. No glowy things here. No glowy things here. Ah, shite. Glowy things? His heart was all funny. Yes. Don't you worry, little boy. I'm gonna save your father from himself. I'm looking in the bathroom for glowing notes. That doesn't make any sense. All right, and your running shoes. Wah. So maybe it's good. I don't Why care. You have to pull back. Then had a moment of clarity when he saw Tommy's pedal car lying half assembled on the floor and realized that it had been a week since he had gone any, done any work on it. He was ashamed that his constant hangovers had kept him from making his son happy, so he got off work and finished the pedal car in the next morning. Tommy was overjoyed and he rode it in the yard for hours. Some of Lena's matches finally got through to Dan. He didn't like the idea of jogging, but he agreed to run two days a week. He didn't enjoy it though, he was out of shape and sometimes by running he got stressed that he wasn't riding, that he could run his... Uh, could, could his run short to go back to the... And put all of this alcohol back in the kitchen cabinet and promised to stay dry on the work days. But he had a hard time focusing while he adjusted to riding sober again. He spent a couple of evenings staring at a blank piece of paper and he never told anyone how hard it was to sneak down to our kitchen to drink those few, first few nights. Yes. But that's just how it goes. The road ahead. The summer came to an end and then for, faced a difficult car. Um, Yes. Great, how are you? Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, after additional consideration, I'd like to augment my recommendation. I believe that the best course of, of action for Tommy's development to, will be continued tutoring throughout the school year. It'll be important to coordinate with his teachers and make sure <coughs> the lessons are aligned. I'm sorry, I almost called. Uh, as before, encouragement from both of you is a critical component. Mr. Kaplan, I have observed that Tommy looks to you in particular for valida validation, which I believe comes from a connection he's made with your profession. If at all possible, you should be a part of his tutoring, although Mrs. Kaplan is more 
than capable of aiding him as well. I hope I haven't overstepped my bounds of by contacting you, but Tommy is a bright boy and I think with the proper support he can not only catch up but excel. I understand you'll be leaving town shortly, but please don't hesitate to contact me by phone during the school year if I can help be can if I can be of help. Dr. Donald Samuels. Of course the boy would think Dad could help me because he's a writer. Barb, by the time you get this, we'll be on our way home. Yeah. So don't write me back here. It's hard to believe the summer's almost over. So much has happened. The show, getting used to life up here, painting more than I have in years, losing Grandma Jo, figuring out where Dan and I are. Part of me doesn't want to leave, but I know it's time. They say you can't go home again. I mm -hmm. think I know what that means now. I don't have it in me to explain everything here, but things will never be the same. I don't even know what home I'm going back to. The only thing I do know is that I'm ready to start painting again. For real, like I did before Tommy. I'm scared and excited and nervous all at the same time. I just wish I knew how we were going to make it work. I hope this finds you well. Yours, Linda. What do you mean you can't go home? Sorry. What do you mean by that? It looks like a painting on itself. The heaven that is, that the sky. Oh, look at that. We are going hey, back Mom. to school. Hey, oh. pumpkin. I knew there was something on the desk. Oh, Mr. Kaplan, we have reached our decision and are pleased to offer you the position for assistant professor of literature. That's nice. We have many applications for the position and after careful review, we feel your history with the university and your status as a published author will give you a unique connection with our students. We apologize for our lateness of this de decision, but administrative adjustments delight on our annual budget review and the position was only recently approved for hire. Professor Strode will handle your course and load until September 21st, at which point you will take our classes. We will provide, you tem we will pro provide temporary housing for you during the speedy transition, but we need your answer as soon as possible. Your offer letter is enclosed. Please sign and return it at your earliest convenience. Thomas Castle. That's a great last name. I'm Mr. Castle. I <laughs> want to make new friends. Well, nobody can. All right. That 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 was that was a joke. I'm sorry, Linda. I'm pleased to meet you. Well, by letter anyway. I'm surprised we've never met, considering how small the art community is. But from your letter, it sounds like you may not have been as active as you'd have liked for a few years. Regardless, I'm very excited to tell you about. Uh, to tell you more about our work here, at a high level the program is simple. We are a collective of artists who use our work for the betterment of our city. We host fundraiser galleries, donate our work to charity auctions and teach art class. We, both, we offer both paid and unpaid courses. And all the proceeds from the paid courses are go, go to a local charities, usually f the food bank. Our free courses are part of a pioneer program we recently started where we provide a safe place for victims of violence, maybe, m maybe, m members of our local AA chapter, and even perilous trying to get back on their feet. Perilous, I'm sorry. The program is still in its very stages, but we've been very pleased with the results. It's a very exciting time. Anyway, you'll find more details in the enclosed information packet. I'd love to talk about to you about joining in person when you return to London. Rachel Pittman, founder, art for I'm all. faster. Is that? Oh no. Takes a book for Tahoe in September, just the two of us. Oh no. So Dan got got a job offer from a f for a, a university or something like that. Oh look at that. Uh, and she got an offer as well. Don't tell me they're in the city they usually live in. This could be it. An associate professorship at Hardesty? Yeah. It's entry level, sure, but everyone has to start somewhere, and it's the perfect situation for writing. 
The sabbatical program alone makes the job worth it. And the thought of actually working with Professor May? Wait, I guess I'd be calling him Philip now. That'll take some getting used to. But moving's a big step. I can't imagine a new school with new kids would be easy for Tommy. I know staying in Laurenton would be better for him and Linda, but they aren't handing out professorships on the corner. This isn't the kind of offer you pass up without a very good reason. Oh no. But I might have two good reasons. I tried to sleep on it last night. What a joke. You have to be able to sleep for that to work. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I completely forgot about Tommy being bullied and having a hard time itself in its new, in its old um, school. I just talked things over with Dan and we really have some serious thinking to do. The job at Hardesty sounds like a great opportunity for him, but moving would be so hard on us. I really want to join Art for All, and after everything we've been through with Tommy, it would be better for him to have some stability. I could even go full-time if Dan found a steady job, though I know he can't do that if he takes on extra tutoring with Tommy, and I'd never fault him for that. If we stay in Laurenton and Dan works with Tommy, I could still do the program part-time. Either way, it'd be better for Tommy and me than moving. But I know that professorship would mean so much to Dan. Can't everything be simple just once? No, because that's life, and life is a bitch. Take it or don't, no in between. This is not a nice choice for me to make. Paul, there were days when I thought this moment would never come. When I finish writing this, I'm going to pack everything up and drop the manuscript in the mail. My palms are sweating just thinking about letting it go. I had no idea how hard it would be to finish this one. It took everything I had, and it's hard to look back over the summer without laughing. To think the plan was to get away from everything and just focus on the book. But you can't get away from yourself. Life doesn't give a damn about geography. I don't know when you'll get this or where we'll be when you do. Or what you'll think. I know what I think, but objectivity left the building months ago. Some days I think this is the one. Other days I have a sick feeling in the pit of my stomach that says my career is over. All I can do is drop this in the mail and hope. Here goes. This is not good. This is not good. Because um some on some point Tommy has to learn he he has to learn that people move throughout their lives. And everything. My car's so cool, I'll be daddy in a race. Yes, give me your thoughts. Give me your memories. What I mean is that Tommy has to learn that sometimes people move. What's happening? What about my friends? What? Your friends are lambs. You'd make new ones, buddy. Right. You make new one, you move anyway when you grow up. You go to college eventually and there you have new friends and shit like that. <laughs> That's just life. Tommy has to understand that. I know it's scary for a kid. Tommy, do not go away. Show my friends my new backpack at school. Tommy. This is not going well. I don't I really don't know. The last thing was so easy to to decide, but this How long is the drive? Two hours. We have to move. Two hours to work, that's no. No, I did that. I did that a long time. And that's just that's just insane. I had I really had a two hour drive to my workplace sometime. And it it went on over a year and I had absolutely no time for nothing. <sighs> that was that was terrible. Could I please read your I shit? had a drink on a weeknight in two weeks. Came up with a new slogan. Write sober, rewrite sober. Rewrite sober. Hemingway, it's not, but it's good to smooth things over with Linda and Tommy a bit. Gotta admit, I don't miss hangovers, but still, 
I do sometimes miss sitting down with a drink and a crazy idea. Well, that's that's uh, something you. It's not something you should miss. Oh, that's not good. Oh. You're not making. Yeah, no, that's not good. That decision is not for me to make. Where's Linda? Linda. No, seriously though, where is she? Just drop the envelope in the mail. So I don't have to... I don't have to decide if you are going to move? Because I thought you are going... You are making me decide that. Why is there a car alarm outside? There's no one here. <laughs> Where are the people? There. Fuck. I finally got through to Dan, at least a little. He said I was nagging him, so I showed him the pamphlets Dr. Walker gave me. He couldn't explain away science, though he did try. I could tell he didn't like it, but he signed up to run two days a week. I wish it was more. But I'll take what I can get. Yeah. But what about that moving thing? I don't have to decide that, right? There you are. I could even go full time if. You can say it. If I got a real job. Yes. Whoa. Send my second painting for the full time application. I don't know. Don't make me decide that. Envelope, what envelope and what mail? What are you talking about? What should I this select the envelope? Show my friends new backpack at school. What are you what are you applying here? Do I have to choose for them to move or not? Oh no. I can't really think much long about that. Oh the envelope is if he takes a job, that is. Alright, now I got it. Now I got it. So my second painting for the full time application. Show my friends my new backpack at school. That's ah The professor job for him is such a good opportunity. It's it's a it's it's it's, it's a real job, and he can make money with his passion. He still can write, and they have a fixed income. Linda could draw more and full time if Dan takes the job. And Tommy has to learn that sometimes people move, even though it's hard, even though sometimes it it's worse in the, in, the, in the beginning, but either way, he's going to move on his, in his life too. He's going to go to college, he's going to meet new people, and he's going to, sometime in his life, just going to meet someone and maybe live on his own. That's how it usually goes. Ah. <sighs> People, why are you making me decide this child? Really now? Can't you do anything on your own? You've been here in the entire summer. I thought I'd, I, I, I thought I had some, like. No, oh, I'm just gonna stand here and think about things. No money, no job, nothing can replace you a nice family. And he's making so much. He's getting so bad during the summer with the reading lessons and everything. And he, the whole thing, the whole summer, he just wished for his dad to have more time for him. So I'm going to choose that. Oh my god. What have I done?
Is this... Oh, I thought for a second the music is like sad or something like that. Then, then no, no, there are no like glowy things here now. Is it is it really over now? Sorry. Nope. Nope. That's that's impossible. We can't do that. Maybe be happy there. Maybe. But maybe not. Might not. Why is she Oh my god. Then couldn't better thought of him, Tommy having other difficulty uh, yet school. So he committed to tutoring on a daily basis to help him catch up and eventually get ahead. Tommy was old enough to understand that even though school wasn't fun, his father made it easier. As he improved school, God understands his father. Although Dan chose to focus on tutoring Tommy instead of taking a part-time job, staying with Lord and still meant L Linda could join art for all part-time. Being around other artists helped her work major and painting began showing in public spaces, spaces around town. Oh my god. Mm, Dan could barely get the words out when he called Hardesty to decline the offer. He knew they wouldn't care about his reason and he turned the job down with the full knowledge that he might never receive such an offer again. He would have keep clawing his way forward, praying that the next advance cheek Jack would come. His career depended on nothing, but I can't read that, I'm sorry. And that's how the Kaplan summer on the house on the cliff came to an end. It was so much more than just a single season on the coast, then choices were would come to define the rest of his life. Dan sent his final draft to Growfield with a knot in his stomach. He knew it wasn't very good, and readers agreed. It sold poorly. Oh no, the only published book one after that. It came and went without anyone much noticing, and uh, he looked back on his life, thought it's a good summary of his career too. And they left the house Daniel Linda loves was deeper than it ever had been. They spent the rest of their lives on an endless honeymoon, traveling and bracing life in a way that few couples ever do. They grew old together, always secure in the deep love that carried them through ever life handed them. <sighs> and by summer's end, Tommy's was a new child. He returned to school full of joy and became the one, one of the most public kids in his class. Though unlike the most of the cool kids, he remained friendly and grounded. By high school, he began getting national attention for his drawing ability. And after going most of his prestigious art schools in America, he became an award-winning graphical novelist. Graphical novelist. He's a graphical novelist! Dan would look back on the summer from time to time and wonder why he had made those choices he had. He never quite shook the feeling that the voice in his head had been more than just a voice. In the quiet moments he even managed that he had been a character in some else novel. At times he was almost sure of it. Um. Wow, there was it! <laughs> Dedicated to my beautiful wife, Christine. Without her belief, support, patience, this game would not exist. A yarn that's free oh, nice of song. worthless moment, a ship on which we're all a stowing a tear. Owen, <laughs> for telling me what's like to be 60 old.
feeling in my stomach because like I said I had a workplace I had to drive two hours to and two hours back home for a year and like I said I had absolutely no time for myself like I, it was I had to begin at 6 a.m. so I had to to wake up and um, everything uh, more in the night to to like get there on time I said in the tube f uh, already in f uh, on 4 a.m. so it was not, so not a nice thing to do even though um, work ended on like 1 p.m. I had I still had some some time to to drive back and by the time get, getting back there was only the only thing I could do was like eat something and maybe maybe shower and maybe like nothing more. I didn't have time for anybody. I didn't have time for myself, not even my cats. And that was the time when I worked there was the time like when I grew more fond of the idea of starting a YouTube channel and I had no time for that I didn't have in any time for making YouTube for even thinking about making videos for 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 drawing my own pictures I didn't even have time for writing I didn't have time for anything and that's why I almost said I almost wanted to say to Dan to take the job to to move because if he would take the job and drive two hours to it and back to it that's no life that's absolutely four hours on on a daily basis you waste which is driving from and to work and that was that, that just that's no life that's no life but in the end i just could i just could decide for tommy because like you read it tommy became a graphical novelist so he had some talent too we completely well I completely overlooked the whole gameplay I didn't saw I just saw him drawing a lot and a lot of kids do that and some kids grow out of their faces but I can't believe I drew a lot in my childhood as well and I even draw now so I overlooked it one obvious thing <laughs> but I'm glad for him and he's making good effort now Dan is that is He's helping his son, he's he's supporting his wife. And it's nothing a good job, that's nothing a good profession could buy you. There's nothing money can replace. But I really enjoyed that game. It was very interesting to be just like the ghost therapist to to help them to help to make them decisions, even though they had their own decisions, but we have them any anyway. In the end, I'm I'm quite satisfied with my with my decision. On some chapters, I was I, I regretted the decisions I made because sometimes uh, Tommy or Linda had to suffer on that, or even Dan himself. But on the very last decision, I'm very satisfied with that. So I'm very curious what family might come next to this house to solve their problems, and why is the telly not like having cables and everything that's the real mystery of this house because we all know it's working but there are no strings on that how curious <laughs> anyway that was the novelist that was the whole game now now it's over 
It was fun while it lasted and I really enjoyed that story. I recommend it for you to play it yourself, to make your own decisions. Maybe you're going to decide something entirely else that leads to an entirely else ending. I don't know, but I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to just close this book. It's part of this channel now. It's part of the chapters in this channel and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on the novelist story and enjoy the rest of the evening. Have a good night and I'll be off now. Goodbye.